I think what we're doing is we're coming together for the greater good of the city. We have a similar vision to the Liberal Democrats on a great number of issues. I do think we all have to work together of all parties. So we're looking at an executive which has more ability for other parties to engage on the decisions ahead of being made. We've invited the Labour and Green leaders to sit at the executive table. So I think those are positives. But we've got to have a direction towards business in York. We've got to have a change of focus on things like the local plan, things like frontline services and things like council tax. But equally, um, yeah, there's going to have to be concessions. So what were negotiations like then? I think they were, they were okay. They were, as you'd expect, we explored all options. Uh, we talked about things we had in common. We talked about some of the differences. We talked about some of the processes. So I think we've all agreed we want open decision making. So we've set out a 12 point programme of the things we want to see. Uh, but apart from that, it's a better governance system for York, I think. I think there is a, I mean, one significant parallel between locally what we're seeing and nationally, which is that we're coming together for the common good. So in 2010, from a national point of view, Labour had, in their own words, spent all the money. There was no money left. The Conservative and Liberal Democrats came together to sort it out. In York, although Daffod's improved things over recent months, it's been a pretty poor Labour administration. I don't think they've given good value for money. I think they've been wasteful. And on things like the local plan, they've not been seeking the things that residents want. So I think we need a change of direction, and we're coming together again for the common good. I mean, I think that we face some very tough decisions, and Labour over the last few years have faced tough decisions, and we will over the next few years. There is a lot less money than there used to be in local government, whichever party's in nationally, so that's going to mean tough choices. We're not going to want to make some of the choices we'll have to make, but that, that is the tough thing and that's what it's about. So that's naturally going to be hard, but we hopefully will work together to respect the fact that we're from different parties, but ultimately people in York want us to work together in a grown-up way. What do you mean by open government then? What do you, what's going to change? Well, we, we're looking at executive systems, so there will be accountability with portfolio holders, but we're also going to have decisions taken after they've been to a scrutiny committee, so people will be able to look at that. We're not going to have behind closed doors decision sessions, so there's going to be the ability for the public to feed in. We're going to be transparent and open with the process, but we're also going to genuinely engage, and I think that's going to have to be the case. Because no one party's got an overall majority, we're going to have to listen to views of other opinions, and we do want to, and we are going to listen to the public at large. Well, we have a different vision. I mean, obviously, one of the examples I would give is the local plan, where Labour wanted to build vast amounts of housing on the green belt. That's something we entirely disagree with. We think we need housing for York residents, we think we need a lot more housing, but nothing like the sort of amounts that Labour were talking about. And the Green Belt also really matters. So we've got a different vision, but we think that's a vision that the people of York share, and it was the Labour administration that got it wrong. But at some stage, you're going to have your equivalent of Lendl Bridge over the next four years, aren't you? And, and the problem is with what Labour did was that whilst it was very unpopular with many people, a lot of people actually thought it was a good idea. And you have this sort of two opinions clashing, not only on the council, but also in the public as well. So what I'm trying to get at here is how, how do you play it differently so as you're not as hurt by a decision like Lendl Bridge that you might have to take as they were? Well, I think, first of all, I'd say we have no plans to close any bridges, and I think that's an important thing. <laughs> right, OK, but, but there will be a Lendl Bridge affair, won't there? Well, there has I'm, to be over the next four years. I'm not sure there will be. We'll get things wrong, undoubtedly, and we'll learn from those. I'm sure we're not going to get everything right. But on Lendl Bridge, you could say it was the right thing to close it, you could say it was the wrong thing, but the big thing that frustrated people, especially those who were pro the closure, was how incompetently it was carried out. Labour could have done something which had cross-party support, which had everyone buying it, and said they steamrolled along with what they thought was the best policy and then it was appallingly carried out. If we take people with us, if we engage people more and everybody has a say in decision making, then you won't have those howlers because that was the worst thing about it, that people were totally ignored on the whole process. So is the biggest test of you then in the next four years when you say, I'd like to do this, but I accept it's not popular so I won't? I mean, I hope I won't be ducking things because they're unpopular. I think if often if things are unpopular, then they're the wrong decision. I think that's the reality of life. But there will be times where we have to take tough decisions that aren't popular, that aren't easy, but that will be the right thing. And, and a lot of those will be on financial constraints, where we would like to spend more money in a lot of areas, but we will have to prioritise. So we will be prioritising the likes of 
rubbish bins, potholes and adult social care rather than wasting, for example, a million pounds on a bridge closure, wasting money on an arts barge or wasting all the money proposed on the Guild Hall. Now the arts barge is an interesting thing to bring up actually because I've already seen a tweet tonight from somebody saying, oh, I hope they don't go for that because it helps vulnerable people. Well, we, we don't support the arts barge. I mean, we think that was a, a poor use of money. We think it was typical of the vanity projects that Labour did. But it's going to be essentially all about supporting vulnerable people. So we've said that on the financial inclusion strategy, there might be things we do slightly differently, but we buy into that. We buy into the concept of looking after the most vulnerable. One of the interesting things that Labour said latterly is they were taking the credit for keeping the cost of living low by freezing council tax ignoring the fact they've only frozen council tax once in four years. We would be looking to freeze council tax as the norm. So uh, we can take from that then that the arts barge, its numbers up then? It looks that way. Hmm. And that's one decision that you won't be swayed on? No, well, we're, we're open on everything. We've, we've said on, on the vanity projects that we think the Guildhall needs looking at and we think there's a fundamental refocus on how the council does things. So if there's a groundswell of opinion for the from the public for the arts barge, we would re-look at that, but it is our stated intention as per the agreement we've put out that that sort of thing would have to go. There's finite money. Will you be blocking your critics on Twitter? I don't think I've ever blocked anyone on Twitter, ever, um, that I can think of. Certainly no one in York, certainly no one for things that I would disagree with. So, no, I will uh, continue to endure the critics on Twitter in the same way on internet sites and everything like that. If someone was abusive, maybe, that sort of thing, but not for people disagreeing with me, no. Finally, can we just very briefly talk about you, OK? Because what I'd like to know and what I'd like to ask, and I know a lot of people would like to ask this, what's changed about you in the last few years that you've been leader of uh, the, the Conservative group? Do you think now that you have this big job and this big position in the city, there have been occasions when you've stuck your foot in it a bit, haven't they, talking about food banks and things like that. Have you changed as a person? Well, I've got a lot more grey hairs, certainly. Uh, if, if people want somebody as their leader who's an absolute clone politician, who has never said anything they regret, that person won't be me. You know, I've lived in York. I'm a Yorkshireman. I've lived here for all of my life. I'm hopefully genuine. I'm hopefully sincere. I don't think you'll meet many people that know me that say I'm not. I will have got things wrong. I will have made mistakes. But when I make mistakes, I'm never too proud to say I'm sorry and I got things wrong. Was there anything that you respected about James Alexander, who again was like yourself, was a young leader, first job? You know, when you look back over that time, what do you think he got right? Well, I think James was very driven. I mean, I would say that. Uh, he had a tremendous drive. I think for me he was too one-dimensional about politics and one particular vision rather than listening. Uh, obviously, James was succeeded by Dafford and Dafford... Keith and myself have got on well and will continue to get on well and the big thing really is we've got to start disagreeing on policy rather than disagreeing on personalities and I think since Dafford has led the Labour group that has been the case and will continue to be the case. Dafford told me tonight he was a bit upset to learn about this through the media. Well obviously I think that's inevitable the way it's going to be in terms of the coalition talks of this nature um, so yeah I mean less than ideal I suppose but there's been numerous things we've learnt about on Labour through the media rather than through themselves so yeah. Chris Stewart thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you David.